So there's been all this talk about SGC, all the SGC stuff on the rise. I'm seeing videos of people doing their SGC submissions and people wearing SGC gear. And I'm starting to wonder, is SGC for real? Is SGC really a contender against PSA? And so I decided to start looking at some of the data, not opinions, not this person said this or this card once sold for that. But what does the actual data say? Now, I've taken a lot of statistics classes in my life, and I've looked at a lot of data and data analysis in my life, and I've done a lot of Excel spreadsheeting in my life. And so I took all of that together and decided to take a look and see, is SGC legit? Is it really a contender with PSA? And I'll be honest with you, I was pretty surprised at what I found. I went back through the start of August of 2022 to the start of November 2022. And I pulled the data of every card sale of three iconic cards from the 1950s, three iconic cards from the 1960s, three from the 70s and three from the 80s. Basically that vintage era, but not the pre-war era. So that 50s, 60s, 70s, and 80s, I picked three iconic rookie cards. And again, I just wanted data, not opinions. So what I did is I pulled all that data, put it in a spreadsheet, and started to analyze it, started to compile it, started to see what are the trends, what does it actually say? So we're gonna take a look at that together. And I think that you might be surprised at what you see because I know I was really surprised. Hey everyone, if you could just take a second, make sure you subscribe to my channel. That is the way you tell me what type of content you enjoy most. I know what to create based on when do people sign up. So if this is a video and this type of content is what you want, please like, please subscribe and I'll make more of this type of content. So down the rabbit hole we go of data. Ultimately, what makes a company worthwhile is the value added as a result of the grading. It's about the value of the card in the holder for that company. So the first thing I made sure of is when analyzing the data, it was auctions only. It was not best offers. It was not buy it nows. That could affect the data. So these are auction values of recent sales in the last three months of these particular cards that we're analyzing. So these are auctions. Second, these were gone through by hand. None of these had a damaged case. None of these had uh, an autograph, but was listed as simply an eight. I went through by hand and compiled each sale for the grades of these cards. So I know that this is not just a data poll by eBay. This is legit. No qualifiers were included. So if it's a PSA 8, it's a PSA 8, no qualifiers. This is All right, the so data. As I look at each decade, first off, I have Bob Gibson in the 1950s. You can see down on our tabs here, I have a 50s, 60s, 70s, and 80s. And this is a deep data dive into each. But the cards that I selected for the 1950s are the Bob Gibson 59 Tops Rookie card. And then I've got an Ernie Banks 1954 Rookie. And I also have the 1955 Sandy Koufax. Now, a few reasons for picking iconic cards is I wanted cards that had a large sample size that are commonly bought and sold so that I had enough data so that the data that I pull and the averages that I get is statistically relevant. If I do cards that 
are rarely sold like a 52 mantle, that is not going to give me enough data to really have solid information. So down below what you see is I went through each card for SGC for the last four months and PSA for the last four months. And I listed them and what they sold for. These are cards, no qualifiers. And these are cards with no autograph, no broken cases, anything like that. I got averages. Based on the averages, I then pulled data and information. All of this done through a spreadsheet. And I'm comparing SGC and PSA. So SGC2, there were no SGC2s that sold in the last four months on the Bob Gibson. But there were several 3s, 4s, 5s, and 6s. And then PSA, there were several PSA 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6s. So you can see the average price that SGC sold for and the average price that PSA sold for. And then I take this data and I pull it out to figure out the difference. So in the SGC versus PSA 3 of the Bob Gibson, the PSA is averaging $46 more. In the four, averaging $44 more. The five, averaging $161 more. And in the six, it's averaging $304 more. So then I pull the percentage more in value. So we have SGC higher on the five, which is interesting that the SGC average value is higher than the PSA value. But on the three, the four, and the six, the PSA is more valuable. And there is no data to be able to compare for the two. So let's go on over and look at the banks. Again, same information here. Pulled all of the cards. Now, again, when there's one or two cards that sold in the last four months, it's not ideal. And in some of the vintage older cards, like the 50s and 60s, there is a smaller sample size. But as we move to the 70s and 80s, there are a lot. And you will see what I mean. So comparing the banks in the two, the PSA is averaging $13 more. But in the three, it's $200 more. In the four, 471 the five, 711, and the six, 1,275. So significantly more valuable to have a Banks and a PSA than an SGC holder for the 1954. So if you have a 1954 Banks and a four, and it's an SGC, there seems to be a lot more demand um, for the PSA than the SGC. But in the in the Gibson, it's a little bit, but not as much. So kind of interesting that all of them are PSA. Now, when you look at the percentages, the higher the grade, the bigger the premium for PSA for the banks. So, so far, the banks clearly is more demanded in the PSA than the SGC. The Gibson, not nearly as much. And let's look at the Kofax. So the Kofax, the two SGC versus the PSA two, barely a difference. Doesn't even register as a full percent. But the three, it's a little bit of a bigger difference. The four, it's a small difference. So in the lower grades of the Kofax, it doesn't really seem to matter all that much. But on the higher grades, Look at this, a $500 extra value for a PSA 5 over an SGC. And then for the 6, it's it's almost, I mean, it's over $800. So uh, 30 to 40% more value for PSA over SGC in the higher grades, but the lower grades, it doesn't seem to matter in the COFAX. So so far, what I'm seeing is for the 50s, at least, on just these three cards that I kind of randomly chose that had a pretty good sample size. I mean, that's a lot of different PSA and SGC cards. So there's a decent amount of data here. It seems that for the COFAX, the higher grade cards 
have a big premium. The lower grade cards don't really have much of a premium for PSA. For the banks, there seems to be a clear value across the board that the PSA is more valuable than the SGC. And that premium increases in the higher grades. And then in the Gibson, it's a little bit more for PSA, especially in the premium higher grades. Almost no difference in the lower grade. But I mean, in this one, the SGC even is selling for more than PSA. So that's kind of interesting. So let's move over to the 60s and see what happens. Now, this was really surprising to me. The Pete Rose rookie, which is the first card we're looking at in the 60s, there was not an SGC 5, but in the 2, the 4, and the 6, the SGC is actually more valuable in the recent sales than the PSA. The only time that the Pete Rose was more valuable in the PSA was on a 3. And again, you know, there aren't a lot of them in there, but but still, you know, there's a couple twos, a couple threes. And you say, oh, that's not a big enough sample site. But remember, these are auctions. So the auctions each have lots and lots of bids and lots and lots of bidders. So each time there's a bid, that's really like a vote for the value. So even though the sample size of the SGC is lower, and you could make the argument, maybe that's why the SGC is selling for more is because there's a lower supply of SGC. So maybe someone's making an SGC set. There aren't a lot of SGC fours. And so when one comes up, people are willing to pay a premium. But this really surprised me that it seems that the SGCs are selling for more in the Pete Rose. Let's go over here and look at the next 1960 card, which is the 65 Steve Carlton. The Steve Carlton, not a lot of SGCs in these kind of mid to lower grades. PSA certainly has a higher value. The biggest takeaway I had here was why isn't a Steve Carlton rookie worth more? I mean, in a six, it's averaging $233 for PSA. A five, it's under $200 for Steve Carlton. That is surprising to me. But again, we look down here and not a ton on the lower grade Steve Carlton and SGC, but on the fives and sixes, that's several sales in the last four months. And the fives and sixes in the PSA, that's a lot of a sample. I mean, that's quite a few cards that you can see what they're selling for. And again, these are non-qualifiers. So interesting, again, the PSA still is in the Carlton seems to be more valuable, but not a huge increase in value. And the premium grades, the five and the six, very small additional value for PSA over SGC. So, so far in the 60s, I mean, SGC values are a little higher in the rows and SGC values aren't far behind in the Carlton. So that's kind of interesting. In the 50s, it seemed like PSA was, was for sure better. Now, here we look at the Nolan Ryan in the 60s. And the two, the SGC is averaging a higher value. The three SGC is averaging a higher value. The five SGC is averaging a higher value. But again, in the premium grade, in the six here, PSA is substantially higher. So PSA is a little bit behind on the two, the three, uh, the two, the three, and the five. PSA is a little ahead in the four, but in the six, it's quite a bit ahead. And again, now we're looking at, look at this, this is a large sample size for the SGC Ryan. So that's a lot of Nolan Ryan. So this is not one card or two cards. This is quite a few in the sixes, the fives, the fours, and in PSA, the fours, the fives, and the sixes, there's a lot of data on the Nolan Ryan card. And still, SGC is hanging tough, except in that premium grade. So in the 60s, it seems like the premium grades 
are still PSA, but some of the mid to lower grades, it's not a big difference. All right, let's look at the 70s. So the first card in the 70s we're going to look at is the Mike Schmidt rookie, the 1973 Mike Schmidt. Now, again, SGC in the five and the six is higher. Now, here I went from three to seven because the newer cards, it's a little easier and there's a bigger sample size um, in three to sevens. So we looked at the three to sevens and PSA is a little ahead in the three. Now, it's a decent amount ahead in the four, but in the five and the six, SGC is higher. That's really surprising to me. In the seven, again, the premium grade, the highest grade that we're looking at here, PSA is quite a bit ahead. And when we look here, I mean, there's quite a few sales. It's multiple sales in the SGC. And in the PSA, we're looking at, I mean, there's a lot of data in here. That's a lot of sales over the last four months of this card. And still the percentage is hanging in there for SGC. But if you want the premium one, it seems like PSA still is the winner. Now, here we are in the next card in the 70s, the Ozzy Smith 1979 Ozzy Smith card. So the PSA in the three is, you know, $5 higher, which is 28%, but it's $5. The SGC and the PSA, there's basically no difference in the four. There's the, P, the PSA is a little bit less than the SGC in the five. So again, in that mid to lower grade, SGC versus PSA, almost no difference. Then you get to the premium grades. And that's where PSA really takes over. So I'm starting to see, in, at least in the 60s and 70s, that if you're, if you're looking at a lower to mid-grade card, SGC versus PSA is no difference. Maybe even SGC might be a little ahead. But in the premium grades, in the higher graded cards, it seems that that's where PSA takes over. So if you're submitting a card, that's some data that I think is pretty, pretty interesting. I'm pretty surprised by. So now we're in the 70s, Dave Winfield. There's no data available for an SGC3. In the four, the SGC is a little ahead again. In the five, PSA is a little ahead. In the six, the SGC is a little ahead. So again, in these middle middle tier grades, SGC is, is right there, if not even a little ahead. But in the premium, once again, the PSA is 39% higher in the highest premium grade. So in a seven, Winfield. So what, what we've seen now through the 50s, 60s, and 70s, to me is really, really interesting, especially in the 60s and 70s, the highest grade people want PSA. That's what the prices are telling me. I mean, that's a, that's a lot of data over here in PSA, especially in the five here. We have some data in the SGC, but but people don't really seem to mind in the mid to lower grades if it's SGC or PSA. But if you're going for a, a big one, an expensive one, a really nice one, PSA seems to be higher. So let's look in the 80s. In the 80s, the first card we're looking at here is the 84 Donner's Don Mattingly. Very iconic card. Again, not a lot of data for the lower end SGC. But once again, the six and the seven Mattingly SGC is a little higher. As we look at the eight and the nine, PSA again is a little higher. So when people are saying, should I go SGC? Should I go PSA? I'm starting to see the trend is it more depends. The value of the card more depends on whether it's a premium grade or a mid to low grade. So again, we've got a lot of SGC sevens and nines and PSA, my goodness, tons of PSA five, six, seven, eights, nines. So this is, this is a lot of data that we're comparing. It's not just, you know, a single card versus a single card. This is over a four month period, but SGC in the middle grades seems as good or higher 
but in the premium grades, again, it's PSA. So let's look over here at the Ricky Henderson rookie. So another iconic card from the 80s. PSA is a little higher here in the lower grade. There's no difference in a six. Almost the same exact value. The seven, SGC is a little higher again. But as we get to the eights and the nines, it's all PSA. So when we look down here, I mean, well, there's a lot of data. So lots of fives, lots of sixes, lots of sevens, lots of eights, a couple of nines. If you look, I mean, PSA, it's so many of these have sold. This took a long, long time to go through all this data and make sure everything is legit. And again, eights and nines, PSA quite a bit ahead. The sixes and sevens, the mid to lower grades, either no difference or even a better for SGC. We look at the 85 tops Mark McGuire. In the 85 tops Mark McGuire, not available in the SGC five, but in we if we look at the sixes, sevens, eights, and nines, again, SGC here is actually higher. PSA's value is a little bit higher here, and the percent is 39 higher here, but it's only a couple of dollars higher. So it's not really that big of a difference. But then we get to the premium grades, and PSA is clearly higher. So I'm going to pull a quick summary here. And, and in the Maguire, oh my gosh, this took forever. The number of PSA Maguires it sells is, is through the roof. Um, but let's look a quick uh, look, take a quick look at the summary. So in the 50s, again, we look at the Gibson, and it's almost all PSA except for that five. We look at the banks, it's almost all PSA. We look at the Kofax, it's, it's all PSA. So in the 50s, it seems like the clear preference is PSA. Now, what I did here is I took an average of the averages for the 1950s. So on a two, the PSA is a little more valuable. The three, it's a little more valuable. The four and five, it's a little more valuable. And the six, it's way more valuable. So again, the premium cards, people clearly prefer the PSA. So again, this is an average of the averages of the three. So let's look down here at the 60s. So again, the 60s, it's SGC, SGC, SGC on the rows, really interesting. PSA on the three, the Carlton, it's all PSA or not available. Uh, but the difference is not a huge difference on the PSA here. And then on the Nolan Ryan, it's SGC, 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 but the premium again goes to PSA. So if we look at the average of the averages for this one, almost no difference on the 60s between PSA and SGC. Almost the same value, but on the premium price, PSA is quite a bit higher. 10% higher is quite a bit. Let's look at the 70s. Again, a review, we have SGC, SGC, and then some PSAs. Here we have a couple more SGCs where SGC is ahead on the Aussie Smith, SGC is ahead on the um, on that those mid grades again, but then again on the higher grades, 27% higher for the Smith, 39% higher on the Winfield, 21% higher on the Schmidt. So the average of the averages, PSA is a little ahead, not really ahead on the six, but way ahead on the seven. Let's look at the 80s. PSA, SGC again, and the big one is the premium. Couple of grades go to PSA by quite a bit. On the Mattingly, couple of SGCs are higher. PSAs on the premium grades. And again, the SGCs right there, and then the PSA on the premium grades. So we look over here and on the 80s, we have PSA and PSA a little ahead. SGC on the 7. SGC is ahead on the average of the averages in the 80s. 
So to me, on those middle to lower grades in the 80s, it's kind of a coin flip. But the eight and the nine, that's where people again want PSA. So a lot of takeaways here when I take this deep dive down this deep rabbit hole on comparing SGC and PSA. And I'm going to be honest with you, I'm fairly surprised. I thought PSA was king of kings. And after looking at this, I'm wondering, is it king of kings or is it just the king of the premium grades? But if it's not a premium graded card, if it's not a highly, highly graded card, is there really a difference in the values? Doesn't really seem like it. And again, this is just randomly picked these cards. I didn't know the data before I started looking them up. If I had known the data, I would not have picked the Ricky Henderson and I would not have picked the Ma uh, the Mc uh, McGuire because, man, I went through just so many cards I had to log. That took forever. Interesting data to say the least. So hope this helps for sure. All right, again, please subscribe. If you're into this type of content, please give me a like. Post a comment. Thanks.